My name is Carrie Seisman, health and wellness coach at Lake Region Healthcare. I'm here with Natalie Knudsen. I love this time of the year. Just the smell sitting around me right now is amazing. So I can't wait to hear what we're going to be doing today. I, I agree with you. And, you know, keeping in mind with the finishing strong our last 90 days and mm -hmm. wanting to incorporate all of our fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, mm -hmm. um, I just had that in mind when when I chose the recipe that we're going to be doing today. So for our recipe this season, we are going to be doing a stuffed acorn squash. And we have two variations of the recipe um, and we're gonna show you each one. So as you see here, I already have the squash ready and prepared. Now this is an acorn squash and instead of cutting it lengthwise, I cut it horizontally because we're gonna serve it right out of the squash. And it looks pretty yes. already. It's like mm -hmm. a, a beautiful little flower. Yes. All right, so for our recipe today, we want to think about what whole grains are we going to use. I have picked a wild rice that I have already cooked. That's the big thing. I was just going to say you cooked it before, right? Yep, I cooked this ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then keep in mind, this is a great opportunity to do batch cooking. So I was, wild rice takes 45 minutes to an hour to cook. Mm -hmm. Why cook one portion when you can cook the entire bag of it? So I have this ready to go. I might throw it in the soup later, but it's cool, ready to go. Probably I'll just portion it out and throw it in the freezer so I have it when I need it. That's a great idea. Um, so in addition to our wild rice, I'm going to scoop in some sauteed, no, not the apples yet. Let's put in the onions first. Half, uh, half a cup. Yeah, they're pretty delicious. I did the same thing with the onions. Um, I cooked up a couple. I don't need them all for this recipe, um, but I have them now for the rest of the week. I can throw them in an omelet or whatever. Great idea. Yeah, so we are going to add a little bit of um, sausage today. Feel free to omit it if you want to go entirely plant-based. You don't need it, but it does add a really nice flavor. The other thing is we don't need an, a lot of it to add a flavor because we know that cutting down on our saturated fats that we find in our meat product is what we want to be doing, but it's Thanksgiving. So. And I was gonna say, I think one of the things that Carrie mentioned to me when she was preparing um, to show us this recipe today was that um, embrace this time of the year. It is the holidays. We don't want to completely gut and revamp some of the traditions and some of the foods that you like to eat. So if you are a meat eater, if we were to present you with something that was just straight up vegetables and that sort of thing, um, you may not even consider it. So here we are, we're gonna add a little bit of meat protein into this recipe today and right. um, just a healthier way to eat something that you might already be eating on the holiday. Yeah, so I have sweet Italian sausage. I have also used, they have like an apple, chicken apple sausage, oh, yeah. and that was delicious too. Um, the chicken apple does not have a lot of fat in it, obviously, this has a lot more. Um, so it came out a little bit drier, but it was still healthy and delicious. So I don't know, it's probably going to be, maybe I'll use about, did you say a half pound? Is that what you're? Yep, the recipe calls for okay. half pound. Got it. So that ends up being, you know, a couple of sausage links. Sure. It looks, okay, we'll throw in another scoop. Okay. All right, so in addition to this, I'm going to add um, a little bit of celery. celery. And if you want to grab the apples, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna throw it all in here. And the apples too? Um, not all of them. Let's do about a half cup of the apples. Okay, so we're gonna use the apples a little bit later for a little dessert. Yeah. So I did not cook the apples and I did not cook the celery because we're going to mix this all together. We're going to stuff our acorn squash and then we're going to throw it in the oven. And so, so we don't have an entire recipe of soft, squishy foods. I wanted to keep those. So they're going to be a little, little crispy. Mm -hmm. So um, I like that idea. Then it doesn't end up being just kind of like a mushy bowl. A giant There's a little bit of crunch. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I almost forgot. We do want to add a little seasoning. So thyme, it's delicious. And a little bit of oregano. And I'm putting, a, putting a half a teaspoon of each in here today. Feel free to play around with the seasonings as you 
the diner. There's no wrong or right way of doing this. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And sometimes the seasonings can kind of make or break a recipe. So if you're if you're somebody that doesn't like a ton of flavor and kind of a little more bland taste, right? Maybe you just kind of keep that in mind as you're adding things in. Yeah, because you do get a lot of flavor from the sauteed onions and also the sausage, you know, the, sausage, the apples. Yep. Really just an amazing dish. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put this in our little acorn squash bowls. And now did you, did you say um, you you baked the acorn squash just a little bit? I did. I threw this in the oven for about a half hour at 400 degrees. Okay. So I also drizzled a little bit of butter, salt, and pepper on the acorn squash too, just to give it some additional flavor. Okay. Um, but no, it's, we don't have to bake it too long. We're really just warming up all the ingredients. Inside. Yeah, Got so it. we're gonna throw this in for probably maybe I don't know, maybe another 20 minutes just to heat it through and to finish cooking the squash because a half hour isn't quite long enough. Um, but you'll, you'll be able to tell as soon as it's fork tender when it's ready to go and everything else is cooked, so we don't have to worry about that. Awesome. All right. All right. So we're going to get this in and then we'll show you our dessert recipe that we put together. Stay tuned. We'll be back. All right, so we have um, one recipe in. Let's focus on kind of a dessert recipe now. So we still have acorn squash. We've got um, the, our two halves, again, already cooked a little bit. Um, in this bowl, I'm putting together just like your typical um, apple crumble. So we have oatmeal, we have a quarter cup of oatmeal, we have a quarter cup of flour. I'm going to add <laughs> doesn't quite fit. I'm going to add a full teaspoon of cinnamon. Oh, maybe a little more. And then I also have about one and a half tablespoons of butter crumbled in the mixture. And for some good measure, some healthy fats, I throw in some walnuts as well. I'm going to stir that together. We've got our apples here. I'm going to put them in a bowl first and add a few dried cranberries because why not? Give it a great flavor. All right, so we're going to mix these up, throw it in our bowl. You can use really whatever kind of apple you choose. I think today I have um, Granny Smith and maybe a jazz apple. As long as they are firm enough to bake up well. So let's put our crumble topping on top. Hope you like cinnamon. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, we're gonna set these in the oven probably for another 20 minutes, and we'll meet you back. All right. All right, well, here you go. <laughs> 20 minutes or so later, um, we have our finished product. So we've got our sausage and apple stuffed acorn squash here. I think we should tip it so you can see it a little bit better. And we have a version of apple crisp. And it smells amazing. It smells amazing. Yes. So go ahead, dig in. Okay. So just nab a little bit of the squash with yeah. the plate. Okay. Got whole grains and fruit, vegetable. Wow. So good. Okay, now I need to try a little bit of the dessert too. I will definitely be wanted to get a little crazy, you sure could add a little dollop of whipping cream or a little ice cream. So, so good. Wow, you guys are in for a treat. I highly <laughs> recommend this meal. So as far as serving size, I mean, if you're 
cooking, say you're, you've got some guests coming over and there's six of you, would you recommend each person getting their own half? And if that's all you're serving, mm -hmm. um, yes, but you could have it on the side and just kind of cut it up in here so they can scoop it out and portion it. Sure, their plates. that's a great idea. Okay, well, awesome. Thank you again for listening and yeah, have a nice holiday season. Bye.